Hi everyone, Dr. Simon Fry here, consultant in clinical neurophysiology. In my last video, I promised I would be talking about something which applies to a lot of people, and I can't think of any other subject than lighting that really applies to pretty much everybody. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, lighting, particularly about LED bulbs, um, and how that has an impact in terms of health, but also in terms of filmmaking. So the first thing to talk about is electricity. I'm sure we're all aware that electricity arrives to our homes as alternating current. The reason for that is to do with the efficiency of moving high voltages across long distances. And it happens to be that alternating currents work better than direct currents, which are flat currents. Alternating currents sort of cycle up and down. In the UK and Europe, it's basically 50 hertz, 50 times a second. And in the USA and other countries um, as well, it's 60 hertz, 60 times a second. Now the old bulbs, now I don't have one with me to show you, it used to be a tungsten filament bulb and basically what would happen is you'd pass a current through this filament, the filament would heat up, it would start to glow, you had a gas around it which was inert which would stop it from overheating and basically that's how it would work. Now it had quite a yellow colour to it and that colour would be roughly about 2,500 to 2,800 Kelvin, uh, thereabouts quite a yellowish colour but most of the energy that went into heating the bulb and getting it to shine basically was lost as heat. And so it was a very inefficient uh, process of lighting. And of course the filament itself would waste out and it would waste out after about a thousand hours. Along came halogen light bulbs. So I've got uh, one, one of these over here. So this is a very small one, but basically you still have a tungsten filament um, over here, but the gas around it was a halogen gas. And what this would allow was some recycling of some of that tungsten material, which would be burnt up. Some of it would be recycled back into the actual filament itself and therefore allow it to basically treble its life to about 3000 um, hours. It also has a higher light output per watt than the standard tungsten one. And so therefore it's slightly more energy efficient. The problem is though, um, is that it's still heating up a tungsten element and therefore a lot of energy is being expended as heat rather than as light. And so it's still not as efficient as we would like it to be. In addition to which, there's another issue too. These things often tend to be quite small. And if you've got kids like mine jumping up and down in their bedrooms, uh, quite often these things would just burn themselves out. And so overall, not the best solution. So along come the LED bulbs and LED bulbs are a little bit different. So these don't rely on heating a filament. Instead, we have these little cells over here, which are basically semiconductors. And as the energy flows across it, basically electrons are driven into what we call holes in the semiconductor. And that reaction releases photons of light, um, which we then perceive as light, which is great. So um, this doesn't actually rely on heating up a filament. Uh, per se, rather it's driving electrons through a semiconductor, which means that fundamentally these two lights are very, very different because whereas the alternating current driving those tungsten filaments, even though the uh, current would be going to a zero state, the actual bulb wouldn't dim significantly, only by about a third or so, because it was still retaining a lot of that heat within it. Whereas these LEDs, they would literally just go from a binary state of on and off on, off, on, off. And so basically you're getting a very fast flicker as you get the current alternating its way through it and going between states of off, on, off, on, off, on, off, and so, and so on. So um, fortunately, most people don't really perceive much of a flicker beyond uh, 90 hertz, 90 events per second. But some people, including myself, can perceive it and it's irritating. In addition to which, most people would actually notice a strobic effect and that basically means that things would slow down, that sometimes things could even be perceived as being stationary, in theory at least. Um, and also people can get phantom images too um, and that relates to how our eyes move within the saccades of eye movement. So um, a lot of people are not comfortable with LED lighting because of the flickering um, aspects of it. In addition to which, LED lights um, tend to be bluer in color. So whereas the pure tungsten filaments and also the halogen um, light bulbs have their Kelvins at about, you know, 
2800, 2900 or so, um, there's a greater proportion of blue light, you know, so we're talking about the 5000 Kelvin plus really range um, of light um, within the LED bulbs. Um, and that actually um, has important health and uh, nat natural implications too. Now, before I just uh, talk about anything else, just uh, go back to the flicker aspect of things. Um, if you have a dimmer switch, um, you also have additional problems as well, because not only do you have the uh, ons and offs of the actual alternating current, which in theory should be fairly you know, smooth and regular, the way most dimmer switches work actually relies on changing the proportion, um, it's called pulse width modulation, the proportion of off time to simulate a reduction in the amount of light being outputted. So, um, in order to bypass the flickering issue, it used to be um, that you would need to have some way of converting your alternating current into a direct current. So instead of having these peaks and troughs, you would have a, a flat and constant source of uh, current going through your bulb. And you'd basically have to end up rewiring your home uh, in order to do this. And I, obviously I make films in my own home and this was actually a real issue for me when we moved over from the halogens to the LEDs and then had to start investing in various continuous lighting sources. And it's a whole faff when you're trying to put together a film in the shortest amount of time as possible. Um, and so uh, you can actually now get, this is a fairly recent type of thing, um, alternating current rectifying bulbs with the circuits within the bulbs themselves and not that much more than the standard bulb. Um, and I'll actually put a link in the description below to the bulbs that I've just bought um, and now filming um, in my home uh, using these. And I can actually use an appropriate duration on the actual shutter timings. I used to have to sort of uh, film at 1 30th of a second with um, a frame rate of 30 frames per second and that was suboptimal. Now I can easily do 60, 120, not a problem at all. So if you're thinking uh, about doing um, videos at home and all those kind of things, and this actually really does apply to loads of people because if you take your smartphone out and you're uh, trying to take a, a video clip at your own home and you've got LED bulbs, then actually that can be a real issue for you. So um, I think it's really useful. You can actually now get rectified circuits uh, within the actual bulbs themselves. You don't need to go to the expense of rewiring your home. Let's get back into the health um, issues uh, relating to this. Now, there isn't terribly much in terms of the scientific literature in a solid you know, scientific basis um, to the potential negative effects of different forms of artificial lights, particularly with the LEDs. It's a fairly you know, nascent and new type of technology and those studies unfortunately are not being done or aren't being published but there are some consensus statements um, which are very important uh, to to actually look at because they do talk about these and and the actual health impacts um, from real experts in the field now I'm not in any way shape or form an expert in these type of things I'm not an ophthalmologist um, and uh, certainly, I can talk about things from a headache perspective a little bit, but um, in terms of actual hard evidence, I think one has to you know, look at these documents um, and understand what they're, they're saying, but these are led by people who are visual experts. Um, the first document to talk about is ANSYS. It's a, a French group which was published fairly recently, April 2019. And there's also a European, a pan-European group called SHEAR, published in June uh, 18. I'll put links to both of these documents below. All of these uh, documents do talk about the potential for people who already suffer with headaches and migraines to actually have exacerbation of headaches and migraines with LED lights. Now, the important things to talk about with this is, apart from the, the flickering and the strobing aspect of things, is the intensity of light and the color of light. The reason that most LED bulbs are bluer in terms of the color because obviously you can you can change how these bulbs output their light um, the reason for that is that the color of the bluer color is more intense um, and therefore it's more efficient in terms of lighting things up to have a, a bluer more powerful light and the problem with that is that it can if you are light sensitive um, sort of push headaches migraines um, in fact, eye strain, particularly with glare, there's no question that more powerful bulbs, more bright, more intense bulbs 
do have issues with uh, glare for those you know, who are sensitive to it. There's also research I've seen from China looking at myopia, um, so that's short sightedness. There has been links to the LED lighting um, to children uh, with that. Um, there's also an interesting debate with regard to retinal changes um, under standard conditions or under lab conditions. There's a whole debate about that, but whether the actual retina itself, the, the layer um, of the eye which contains uh, all those rods and cones uh, that actually pick up uh, the light itself and then send it backwards through to your brain, whether that is susceptible to be damaged and for how long. Um, so that's a, that's a very important thing. Um, blue light itself is actually known to definitely affect your uh, sleep cycle. And the reason for that is it has been shown to reduce the amount of melatonin, and that's the hormone which is particularly important for sleep, um, to be reduced. And that can actually have a deleterious effect on people's ability to relax and fall asleep. And quite a few of the mobile phone manufacturers um, are now actually have a mode on their phone. Um, I'm just gonna show you with my one. I'll just get, get this one out. So this is a Samsung um, S10. Um, and it has, let's just go over here. Um, you can see this is the standard screen and I'll just actually make sure that's in focus over there. Just get this all right for you. And it has a blue light filter and hopefully you'll be able to see that it is gone a little bit yellower than it was before. And I'll just take that off and you can see it's a little bit brighter there. You can also interestingly see the flicker um, on the screen, which is uh, which is interesting. So this is, you know, LEDs are everywhere. Literally, we're, we're all affected um, by lighting and um, in, in one way or another. So um, blue light is known to affect your melatonin. Um, there are questions with regard to people who have mental health issues, whether LEDs may or may not have a deleterious effect on their issues. I would presume that the mechanism would be you know, primarily related to um, effects on sleep and ability to relax. Um, there are some very significant questions related to the environment and light pollution um, in terms of what it does to our wider habitat, our ecosystems around us, um, and you know, even for people flying planes. Um, so there are lots of potential issues with regard to LED lighting. The reality is that LED lighting is, is here to stay. Um, and I think that the sheer document is quite measured, I think, in terms of recognizing that there are potential health issues. I think it's also reasonable to say that for the most part, obviously there are millions of people being exposed to LED bulbs. We aren't seeing epidemics of you know, worsening headaches, worsening migraines, people complaining of, of more eye strain than fluorescent bulbs than they're already having. Um, so I think it's, it, it's quite a measured document. Um, and what they say is that there isn't enough evidence to you know, be definitive about the deleterious potential effects of LED lighting. Um, but at the same time, we have to be open-minded to it. We have to be able to keep our eyes open to see whether there are long-lasting and, and long-standing effects of different ways with which we now light our environment. So I'm going to leave it there. And thank you very much for watching. I'm going to be coming back to pure neurophysiology uh, subjects very soon. In fact, the next video is going to be about brachial neuritis. Um, and uh, then I'll be looking at um, things to do with uh, iatrogenic neuropathies. Uh, in other words, neuropathies caused by doctors, um, particularly with regard to surgery. So that'll be an interesting little series uh, to be exploring with you. So uh, looking forward to seeing you um, in the next video shortly. All the very best.